Hello everybody out there bakes here, back at the reveal. Everybody here with my next review for Halloween Central Mother Bay. For today's review one, we'll be taking a look at the last of the World Combat Legends filter by that'd be the most recent film. Came out a little bit earlier this month there, that being Snowblind. Everybody, as you all know from the last review by I was pretty disappointed how things turned out for Battle of the Realms there. Well Battle of the Realms had good animation, you can actually see there. Uh, overall story characters felt pretty flat there. So I was hoping that Snowblind would be a good would be a good bounce back compared to how things went for Battle of the Rose by. And we're such a wise everybody for what I would see there. Uh Snowblind was well received there, but a lot better than Battle of the Robes were there. However, uh to the, however, a lot of people do still consider Scorpion's Revenge the strongest movie of the Legend series thus far. So so left me optimistic on how things were going to turn out for Snowblind everybody. So, plus I was a little bit curious everybody as um, this we uh, looked like I was going to get focused on some characters in World Combat that are weren't as well known, were as well recognized there, with Kitchi Takashi being the main focus there and Kato being the main villain there, and a couple other characters be a feature there. So I had to get more spotlight. Recently I had a chance to view Snowblind everybody out here doing a review for y'all. As you'll be going plot summary, pros and cons, and overall thoughts are didn't share by. Let's go right to everyone. Now everyone, before I get into the plot summary by, um, I will go ahead and give you all a bit quick heads up everybody that that uh, that Snowblind could be considered a little bit of a soft reboot for Mortal Kombat Legends by as this movie doesn't seem to have a real major connection storyline wise to the previous films there. We, we do have, of course, we do have some characters that show up in other films, such as Sub Zero and Scorpion featured there. And we do see a statue of Liu Kang. But, but it seems like this movie is taking, yeah, this movie, the storyline for Snowblind there is, yeah, doesn't really have any real major connections to the previous films there. So, just want to give you all a quick heads up before I dive into the plot. So, here, everybody, so. Anyways, everyone, get right to everyone. There are made full main story, a plot for you here by, you know, essentially the Black Dragons, a uh, mercenary group led by Kano. It's supposed to take over Earth World there after Earth World's been turned to wasteland there because of the out the recent appearance of remnants there. Which for those of you who are too familiar with World Combat, there is pretty much World Combat's equivalent of zombies, so or lost and or lost spirits. Or they pretty much ran across the world and turned Earth Realm into a wasteland. With the Black Dragon being the, <laughs> the Black Dragon being looking to be the main new rulers of Earth Realm there, this new era wasteland. However, they would however the Black Dragons that runs the troll there when Tichi Takashi encounters something there when the elite guards, Kendra, Cabal, and Cobra were looking to a town. But Kitchi had to fight them off there, but they warned Kitchi that they would come back there. And they did with Tribber there. <laughs> but as like it was has elemental powers there, earth and lava powers there, and uh and Major beat down Kitchi there. <laughs> and Kitchi looking to find a way to get be more power be powerful enough to defeat Tribber there and fight off against the black dragons. That's why he counters Shake soon. Who tricked Kinji a little bit of the, the, uh, the Well of Souls there. And Shang Tsung was able to get a whole bunch of power from it there. As he was serving other Kano. But it was looking to rebel against them there. After acquiring a large amount of souls. And Kinji ended up getting become blind there. Left for dead. And Shang Tsung's hands there. Shang Tsung tried to fight back against Kano there. But he was unable to stop Kano there. <laughs> So Kitchi is eventually counters Quai Leg, who is much old, who is much older there and has had a bit of a trouble past there and whatnot. As we do see hit the different scene and you know, with him, you know, be haunted by different nightmares and whatnot there. Uh, but uh, Quai Leg eventually decides to train Kitchi there to use his new powers there after acquiring a sword. Sito 
which contains the which contains you know great power there. And just make sure Kitchi's strong enough to fight a yeah, got to fight a warrior there. As far as she's essential summary of the player by, I'll go into major spoilers or anything like that there. So now on to the pros and cons for the movie everybody. So after watching Snowblier by what are my overall thoughts on it there? Did manage to come a pretty good bounce back after the disappointment that was about the realms there? Well everyone, I'm very happy to say that you know I felt that, you know I did have a good amount of enjoyment watching Snowblier by I do consider it a good comeback considering how things turned out for Battle of the Realms there. And it seems like the pe uh, people working on um more combat legends there learned from their mistakes there for Battle of the Realms there and applied it to Snowboy there. They had one major storyline there, meant to be a central focus there, and they had a pretty good amount of time flushing out different characters and whatnot. So on top of keeping up with the good action and animation we see for the other films there. Uh, apologies, Vince, everybody, for any hiccups, subversive, everybody. Uh, I'll try to do this control here. Hey, everybody, overall, I had a pretty fun time watching somebody, everybody. And we were irritated the good animation, the, the butter two films, everybody, as well as the great action scenes there. Although things are a little different by compared to the other Mortal Kombat films there, as I'm, uh, I said, well, this is kind of like a, the action scenes are more like a style of post apocalyptic films like Mad Max there, so eh. So we do get a different style of action scenes there compared to the other World Combat films, so eh. But I still manage to retain the gory brutality of the previous movies. <laughs> and as for the overall story by I thought it was done relatively well there. Um uh, thought they did a pretty good job with Kenshi being the main focus there. Yeah, you know, I like Kenshi there. He was up, he's up there as one of my favorite Mortal Kombat characters there. I was pretty happy to see him have a pretty good amount of screen time there, and it became a strong developed character throughout the field there. Really get behind Kenshi there, and you know had struggles there and whatnot. And this movie did a pretty good job with Kawhi Lake's character there, where yeah. You know, if I, um, I felt like quite, quite like, you know, he was one of the characters that really didn't get enough, flat, didn't really have time to get his character fleshed out there in Battle of the Realms there, you know, but for this one, he becomes the secondary main protagonist there, and I thought they did a really good job with his character there, you know, he'd be much older there, and be had trouble with, you know, trouble some past there as well, you know, the nightmares comes from an incident there, whenever the remnants first arrived on Earth there and whatnot, in uh, uh, Twilight took the rest of the league way over to the city there, and uh, Sub Zero, and he managed to stop the Reddits there, but the problem, he was unable to control his power there, and he caused a huge ice storm there, and ended up killing Giz and people, and and other and the remaining members of League Way because of it there, and he's been scarred by the by his he was scarred by by that incident there. Thought they did a really good job with his character as well there. And everybody as for Kaylor everyone, that's a main as a main villain for this film. I thought they did a very good job with Kaylor by Kaylor's always been a very interesting character by you know one of you know or Tate villain characters by and it was nice to see him get the it was nice to see him get the the central sit fo, fo, central focus as a as a main antagonist for this movie here. Thought they did a really good job with Kaylor as a main villain. And they did a pretty good job of showing it to be a big threat to deal with there. <laughs> Albeit he did get some uh, big boosts in power there, which, you know, the film does explain a little later on there, which, <laughs> which I'll get into a little later on there, buddy, but that overall, you know, they did a pretty good job with Kato as the main antagonist there. He's still entertained there, but he was showing to be a major threat there. Anyway, as far as other leagues are by, um, they were hit miss, there were some I liked, so I really didn't care much for. I'll get to more of that talk about pros and cons everybody, but but for the other characters of I, you know, other villains of I were hit or miss there. So hey. <laughs> but as for K1, I thought they did a really good job with him as a main as a main antagonist there. So, yeah.
so everybody, like I said, it seems that the writers, you know, took a lot of the criticism that was, uh, they managed to fix a lot of the issues that happened with Battle of the Worlds, everybody, and managed to make a stronger story, you know, and I guess more invested with the characters compared to the last filler one. But that makes everyone, there are still some criticisms, everybody, so we'll go ahead and get right to the cards, everybody. Not, a whole, not really a whole lot to everybody, um, but uh, still, so, there's a little criticism worth to bring you up, everybody. Uh, first of all, like I said, everyone, um, the other villains, everybody, the rare hits are missed there. Um, aside from Kano, I liked Kendra's character and Trevor. I uh, felt really good job with their characters there. But there were some characters that I felt were better to utilize there or weren't necessarily, I really didn't care much for. Like, for example, Cobra there. I mean, Cobra, he was my least favorite out of the, you know, elite guard for Kato there. And, you know, he get he gets black. He's he probably sort of the last purpose of the film there out of the villains, you know. He ends up getting blasted during the fight with Shang Soon and with Shang Soon and Kato there. <laughs> and everybody, Cabal, I felt Cabal was underutilized a bit there. I mean, I mean Cabal, well, you know, he does have the same fight as Cabal everybody. As y'all know, Cabal's kind of like a speedster character there. And, well, we didn't really get to see Cabal use his speed power in the field there, which was which was a missed opportunity, in my opinion, there. It would have been cool to see Cabal going real fast for use his, use his weapons there and whatnot, and some of the fights there and whatnot, so yeah. There was one villain I definitely felt was very underutilized by, you know, <laughs> although, considering how his character's been treated throughout the series there by, you know, he hasn't really been... Huge threat to get a huge threat by that being Shake Sooner by. Anyway, there's one prisoner by that's, you know, that's been pretty consistent with the Legend Fills are by. Is that Shake Sooner's character felt pretty flat there. I mean, in Swarby's Revenger by, he was just like a. Said, he was just stand on the sidelines there to really do a whole lot there, aside from being a spectator for the tournament, for the World Combat Tournament there. And the second movie, Battle Robes, he does get some action in there, but he gets body by. <laughs> Liu Kang. <laughs> and he doesn't really serve much of a purpose in Battle of Realms after that point there. And this movie is not really much different there. He serves as another league for Kano there. You know, he does try to... He does, like I say, he does try to fight back at one point, but he gets taken out there by Kano, so... <laughs> and we don't, see, we don't see Shang soon return the film of that point there. Which... Uh, another, again, another kind of missed opportunity by as, you know, everybody kids here by, you know, Shang Tsung played a pretty big role in his origin story there, so that, you know, and Kenshi, like, is on this quest to get revenge on Shang Tsung there, you know, Kenshi does talk about a little bit of this film there, but when Shang Tsung get taken out by Kato there, you know, that would have been nice to see a little, like, a clash between Shang Tsung and Kenshi throughout the filler by, but we don't necessarily get that there, you know. So you got to take out by Kano, so yeah. Uh, for Shang Tsung fans, hoping that he was going to serve a large purpose to the film by... Sadly, that's not the case there. He's st he still treated like trash. <laughs> like in the other Legends films there. <laughs> everybody, um... There are next one's kind of a minor nitpicker by, but uh, I thought it would have been nice if, you know... The film established Kitchy as a sword fighter at the beginning there, so, you know. Or at least do a hybrid of him doing, like, fist fighting and sword fighting style there with a regular katana there, and stuff like that, you know. Since, you know, in the Mortal Kombat universe, he's known as one of the best sword fighters on Earth World and stuff like that, you know. I thought it would have been nice if, you know, the film kind of showed it off in the beginning portion with Kitchy's character that first got introduced there, so... But like I said, that's just a minor nitpick there. Like I said, overall, they do a great job with Kitchy's character there. And Kitchy is a very strong main character, everybody. <laughs> uh, sorry for the game for a picture, everybody. Anyway, right, well, my last Chris, everybody, is with a little bit of the Indian, everybody. Never one, the Indian, the film's not necessarily bad there, but, um... It does, you know... But... But there is one part there, everybody, that does kind of give an explanation as to why Kale got so powerful there. And, well, how the reason's going to be kind of divisive there, you know. 
everyone at the end of the filler by him, it's revealed that the reason KO got so powerful there was because he somehow managed to defeat Kroy Karabai, which those of you are to be more combat. Kroy Karabai, she's kind of like the... It sounds like one of the most powerful characters in all Mortal Kombat there. And she has a she has the ability to reset the timeline there with, with access to her hourglass. Well, the end of the filler body, we see Sub Zero and Kano, you know, have in their final fight there. And well we see a skull we see a skull there by that opens up the doorway there and and we get to see Kroika's hourglass there and the movie reveals that the reason why Kano got so powerful there was because he got a hold of the hourglass there, and managed to reset the timeline there, where he made sure he was the most powerful being on Earth world there, and he caused havoc there, turned into a barren wasteland there. A wasteland he could rule and stuff like that there. And showing he was also the one to, to break the remnants to Earth world there, and turn to wasteland in the first place. So. And well, everybody, I mean... <laughs> Everyone, that does leave a kind of like open question. Everyone, so it does explain how Kano got so powerful. Everyone does op kind of open up the doorway to other questions there. Like, how in the world did Kato know about Korika there? And how he managed to beat her and whatnot, you know. And how, exactly how much, you know, like I said, like said, this movie does kind of serve as like a bit of a soft reboot to the Legend series everybody. It does leave you what does leave you wondering what exactly what happened with the other characters there and stuff like that after Kato raced the timeline there. It just I mean the film braided up there just opens up a whole you know can of worms there of questions there and stuff like that you know. Now they might they might dive into it there in in future films or by or like I said maybe just you know or you just like they said you know. Maybe just stay in direction there where they just focus on individual stories there, like alternate timelines there and whatnot in the Mortal Kombat universe there. So that with this being one of them here, or, you know, it's a bare wasteland there, Kato was in charge of stuff like that there, you know. So yeah. But that's pretty much it for the pros and cons there by for uh Snowblind everybody now to my overall final thoughts everyone. So overall, everybody, I had fun watching Snowblinder by now. If you were to ask me if it's my, my favorite, the fret in this Legend series, by I still think that title goes to Moral Kombat Legend Scorpion's Revenge there, but Snowblinder's a pretty close second. It did a pretty good job out to the back from the disappointment that was Battle of Realms there. And have a strong story, and most strong cast of characters there. It has pretty good bounce back there. It, it's taking the Legend series into an inter interesting direction there. I am very curious to see what what WB and the people working on Mortal Kombat Legends are going to be doing going forward with the franchise. So for overall Fire Day share by, I'm going to give Snowblight a watch your rate there. So. so everyone, if you're... So, for people who see the other Legends films are by and curious, it had, and I haven't seen Snowblind yet there, I recommend you do so. It's definitely, I mean, it's definitely a good way to bounce back compared to the disappointment that was World Combat Battle of the Realms, Legends Battle of the Realms there. And it's a fun movie for, I think it'd be a fun action film there for people who may not be too familiar with the World Combat lore to watch there, so yeah. But anyways, everybody, now Pro Charter is up for... This year one. <clears throat> Next everybody, I'll be taking a look at the theme films everybody. So we're gonna be taking a little break for everybody. I make sure everybody do have one more animated film planned for always this one, but everybody or at least tried to get to it here. Uh, I said I did talk about it a little bit in the update there, you know, a little bit in a previous review everybody, but Next reviews are by I'll be looking at the thing fields are I started with the with the first thing we are by from I believe it was from the nineteen fifties or sixties there. Can't quite remember there, so but that'll be the next film we take a look at here for Holy Sword Mother there by. So but until then that'll things up for now everyone. If you like the show here, make sure you like button, new channel, subscribe, and bell notification icon so it self loads. I'll see you next time this our big sound. Peace.